Many GTA fans will know that for GTA 5, they marketed the game through buying out journalists and reviewers to give the game awful reviews, therefore making people want to see if it was really that bad. But this is only one out of many at the tip of the seemingly deep, odd GTA marketing strategies iceberg. Hello, I'm Sam. I'm at Internet Documentaries and today we're going to be covering the strange marketing strategies of GTA over time and even leads to a theory about the up and coming game GTA 6. But first let's rewind back to the 28th of November 1997. On this day the first ever GTA game was released. It was a commercial success but had a lot of mixed reviews. This was because of mainly janky controls and this sort of sprouted from the bird's eye view dynamic of the game which as we would find out later doesn't really work for us. Fans were interested in the idea of the game because a lot of game companies were scared of going into the world of crime, but it filled up the emptiness of crime games, which wasn't filled by companies like Nintendo, which didn't want to affect their brand. The game sold 3 million copies on release, but Nintendo games were selling 4.5 million copies on release. They needed a way to stand out against the bold Nintendo games, and this point was further pushed when they tried again on the 30th of September 1999 with GTA 2 releasing, but it would do even worse, selling only 2 million copies. Not even many people heard of the first game, and the fact that they just put a massive 2 on the old logo was probably a bit intimidating for people, especially for those just getting into gaming. The two factors between these two games is that they barely advertise them, and it makes sense because what company would want to support a game supporting crime? It doesn't make sense from a brand point of view. They would make their own ads, but they just wouldn't really blow up because it was irrelevant. They didn't have a big name telling you to play. It was just another small game. But at this time, 3D games were just coming into play, so that meant on the 22nd of October 2001, GTA 3 was released, and it sold over 14 million copies on release. This got five times the amount of sales than the original game. It was doubling games like Super Smash Bros, and the reason why was because of the advertising. You know that code ad where the guy gets out of his car and he's being really nice? Yeah, that's a GTA ad. This was the first GTA game to get over 10 million sales, and what's the coincidence that it was further advertised by a massive company? The ad was so good that it's still iconic today, and everyone loves it, but it brought a new fan base to GTA. So everyone thought that Rockstar would continue doing this, possibly getting more ads from Coca Cola to keep advertising their game, but everyone was wrong, because it seems like Rockstar got a bit too cocky. Releasing the fourth GTA game with barely any third party advertising, this game did significantly worse than GTA 3, on release only selling 6 million copies. Yes, this was technically a success, but it wasn't really, because they put way less time into GTA 3 because there was less mechanics and less places to go to. Rockstar had learned their mistake now though, and they were going to do something way beyond these little third party ads. Just before the release of GTA 5, the game was flooded with horrible reviews from big companies like IGN. The news was talking about GTA because of it. It was deemed violent and horrible, and that too many people were going to try and play it, and that a lot of the story was bad. We already live in Canyon County, so there's a good chance that my children will be involved in crime at some point, and I don't want to buy them a game that will train them for that future. But this is exactly what Rockstar wanted. Actually paying these massive reviewers like IGN to review it, slandering the game, getting people to see if it was actually that bad. This brought unreal levels of attention to the game and it sold 250 million copies on release and made 1 billion dollars. I think they have to outdo this with GTA 6 and the way they're going to do it like they did with GTA 5 because clearly it's all down to the advertising is there's going to be something after the release of the game, maybe in the next few years after 2025, that is a massive twist, and I think I already know what it is. You know how there's a GTA 6 hacker who's supposedly been leaking the game files for ages now, and reportedly in custody? Well, what if that person is just another Rockstar advertising scheme? Because clearly they're not too bothered with crossing the line, as long as they can get as many people to play their game. This is also the reason why the trailer got so many views, because they released early just because they said the hacker has leaked the trailer, go watch it on YouTube, almost creating a sense of urgency. Rockstar has shown that they will cross any lines necessary to make sure the GTA games are advertised to the largest majority of people possible, and have shown in the past that they are even willing to take massive risks in order to achieve this. The large amounts of evidence show that GTA 6's hacker is probably another advertisement scheme, but the news is always updating around GTA 6, with it releasing in 2025. So if you want to stay updated, then why not subscribe? Also, if you enjoyed this video, you'll love my video on Nikkei 30, the not so family friendly rise.